In this video, I'd like to talk about the paper called Glugen, open set grounded text to image generation from CPR 2023, that they propose a new type of diffusion models that you can have a grounding, like a bounding box, in addition to the text, like a photo of a hybrid between a bee and a rabbit, and force a diffusion model to generate an image with this constraint as the grounding. Like for each of the bounding boxes, you have a grounded text and you localize and say in the red bounding box, you have a hybrid between a bee and a rabbit. And in a green bounding box, you have a flower and it generates images like this. But bounding box is not the only grounding you can have. You can also have key points or a depth map or even more like you can have a bounding box, but in addition, you can have a grounded image. So I can give an image of a dog or a bird or a backpack and force the fusion model to use that object for the image generation, but in the context that we are interested. For understanding how it works, let's just pick this sample and see how we can create the grounding tokens and also the caption tokens to use in our diffusion models. The instructions that we have for controlling our diffusion model can be denoted as a tensor Y, which is a mix of C and E. What is C is just the caption. Let's just say I have L different tokens, which are this a photo of a hybrid between a bee and a rabbit, and that's our caption as our control. But in addition, we have a E, which is the grounding. And for grounding, we say how many objects do we have? In general, let's just say N objects. But in our example, we have two bounding boxes, so two grounding. Each grounding is represented by a vector E, which is the text, like a hybrid between a bee and a rabbit, and also L, which is the bounding box in this example. And having these instructions, let's just see how we can create the tokens. For creating the caption tokens, we can do exactly as what we can do in a stable diffusions. We can pass the caption into a text encoder and it generates some caption tokens. And a stable diffusion uses clip text encoder for this purpose, so here they do the same. But what about the grounding text, like the red hybrid between a bee and a rabbit or flower? For that, we can do the exact same text encoder. Like here in the another example, we can have a bride or groom or a wedding cake, each of them representing different bounding boxes, and use the text and pass it to the same clip text encoder to create the tokens. But this is for the text. How about the bounding box? For bounding box, we can represent it by four numbers. The alpha min and beta min is the location of the top left part of the bounding box and alpha max and beta max is the location of the bottom right. One idea is just to have this and concatenate it with the text tokens that we got from the clip text encoder. But the issue is that the embedding size of the text tokens is a lot compared to the bounding box tokens. For text, we have a vector with size 768, but for bounding box, we have only four. And if I concatenate this four with that 768 dimensional vector, we might miss this information. So how we can force the model to focus on this bounding box as much as it focuses on the text. For that purpose, they're using a Fourier embedding. It's an embedding that was originally proposed from a NeurIPS 2020 paper that essentially what it does is that it receives this four dimensional vector and outputs a vector in a larger dimension. And once we have the concatenation of this text vector and the Fourier of the bounding box vector, we can pass it to an MLP and get the grounding tokens. So now that we have the visual tokens from the image encoder, caption tokens from the clip text encoder and grounding, let's just see how we can train our diffusion model to add this grounding as additional constraint. In the diffusion model, we have two types of attentions. One is self-attention that it receives thus just the visual tokens and generates the visual tokens as the output. And the other thing is the cross attention that receives both caption and visual tokens and then generates the new visual tokens that also encodes the text information in addition to the visual information. But for our case, we also need to add this grounding tokens as extra conditions. The way that they do in this paper is that they propose a new module called gated self-attention and they place it in the middle. For the stable diffusion, the self-attention and cross-attentions are already trained. We can keep it frozen and only train this gated self-attention. But what is this gated self-attention? Let's just see that. 
The self-attention and cross-attention can be defined like this. The self-attention receives the visual tokens as the input and generates the new visual tokens. The cross-attention receives visual tokens and the caption tokens as the input and generates the new visual tokens. But how about the gated self-attention? For gated self-attentions, we first concatenate the visual tokens and the grounding tokens. Once we concatenate it, we pass it to a self-attention, but the output of the self-attention should contain both the visual tokens and the grounding tokens. But we don't really care about the grounding tokens, because now the visual tokens also encode the information and have these grounding tokens as a constraint. So we can define a token selection mechanism that only selects the tokens corresponding to the visual tokens. And having that, the new visual token is what is used to be plus 10h of a gamma parameter multiplied by the output of this self-attention and this token selection mechanism. But what is this gamma? This gamma is initialized to be zero, meaning that the 10h of zero is zero. And initially, once we want to add this grounding as extra condition, they have no influence on the output of the stable diffusion. So initially in the training, it is as equal as not having any grounding and only have visual and caption. And throughout training, once we want to minimize the loss function to have the effect of grounding in the output, it learns to adjust the gamma to either add or subtract the output of the self-attention to the visual tokens that it used to have. And what is the loss function? It is the loss function of the diffusion model that we want to predict the noise from the output of this f function that receives zt, the embedding from the previous time step, and also the t because at each time step we add different noise, and also the vector y, and this y is the grounding instruction input. But this loss function does not update the parameters of self-attention or cross-attention. They are frozen and in the formula are denoted by the theta parameters. It instead updates theta prime parameters, which are the parameters corresponding to gate self-attention and also the MLP that generates the grounding tokens. And yeah, that's the training, but you can see that there's one gap that is missing in the gate self-attention formula, and that is beta parameter, that throughout the training it is always set to be a value of one. But at inference time, they notice that if we just keep it as is, we notice that the generation quality is not very good because it has this grounding as, a, as an extra condition and it might sometimes generate a low quality image. And they want to improve it. The way that they improve it is that they set some sort of a scheduler for this beta parameter that throughout the denoising step, after some point, it would be changed to be a value of zero and removes this bounding box as the constraint. Which kind of makes sense because at initial steps of the denoising diffusion steps, we want to form where the object is located. But after some steps, we don't really care about it anymore. So we can just set it to be zero and do not apply this gated self-attention anymore. And to just show you how it can influence the output, we can see this as the sample that we can have either a bounding box or some key points as the grounding instruction. And we can see on the column at the middle that if we do not apply this beta scheduler and use it to be always one, then at the generated sample, it might contain some watermarks because the images in the training sometimes have some watermarks. They are gathered from the internet. Or if you want to say this generated person has to be a robot, then since we are forcing some key points, then the generated image is not a robot anymore. But it appears that if you want to remove this beta after some steps, then it model has more flexibility to pay attention on the robot instead of the key points and generate a robot instead of image of a human. And yeah, that's the whole idea behind that. Just to give you some additional results, you can see that we can have a bounding box of a dog as the red bounding box and also an umbrella in the green and also the C as the blue bounding box. And the collision will generate these images as the output. But what if I give the caption to the stable diffusion without any bounding box? What would happen? We can see that the generated image would be something like this. That in the generated image, we don't really have any umbrella and the stable diffusion kind of disregards that information. Or what if I have a weird prompt like 
a hen is hatching in a huge egg. With the grounding bounding boxes, I can locate where this huge egg is located in the image, and the generated images will contain it. But for the stable diffusion, since it doesn't really see a huge egg in the training, it generates multiple eggs to make a huge egg. And similarly, if I give it a prompt like an apple and a same size dog, you can see that the Glegion can successfully generate the images, but for the stable diffusion, it creates multiple apples. I mean, yeah, they are kind of the same size as a dog, but the dog doesn't seem natural, does it? But yeah, that's all I wanted you to know about this Glegion paper. If you have enjoyed watching it, don't forget to like and subscribe. And until the next video, goodbye.